I have two PS4 DualShock controllers that are acting up. Both have problems with the left joystick. The problem being the controller acts like you're pushing on the stick when you're not touching it. On the white controller, the right stick just doesn't act quite normal. Cleaning the potentiometers in them has not fixed the problem, so it's time to replace them. The white controller has orange potentiometers and the black one has green ones. I didn't see the orange replacement potentiometers, only the green ones, and they are apparently not interchangeable. Amazon has a kit by Elect Gear called the PS4 Orange. It says the joystick modules will fit the older version of the controllers and the newer ones, so thought I would give it a try. The PS4 Orange kit comes with four joystick modules and a small screwdriver. I kind of find the screwdriver inclusion funny. You are going to need desoldering and soldering tools. At the very least, a soldering iron and some solder wick. But the included screwdriver does fit the tiny Phillips screws just fine. This controller has been apart quite a few times, so it is a lot easier for the shell to separate than one that has never been apart. The plastic clips on the sides near the trigger buttons and the ones near the back center are quite robust at holding it together for the first two or three disassemblies. The careful separation of the back is needed as there is a flat flexible cable connecting the back to the PC board. Underneath the battery is a screw that has to be removed to get the plastic battery holder off. After removing the battery holder, there is a very small FPC cable that has to be removed. It has a pull tab on it to help with its removal. Then there are just some small plastic clips holding the PC board in place. The knobs just pull off, then separate the front cover from the frame and we're ready to get to work. This is the controller with the orange potentiometers and I'm going to remove the joystick with a vacuum desoldering gun. I will put a little flux and some fresh solder on the terminals before desoldering them. If you have access to a desoldering gun, then this will be a very easy repair. When desoldered, the parts can be removed with ease or even just fall out. For the controller with the green potentiometers, I'm going to do it the hard way as if my desoldering gun was out of order. So I'm going to replace this joystick using a soldering iron, solder wick, and a very small set of side cutters. I didn't do it here to start with, but I should have. That is to remove the red and black wires from the vibration motors, to make it easier to work on, and not to put so much stress on the motor leads. Now to remove the potentiometers, each one just clips into the joystick with two tabs. So just pop them away from the joystick so they are clear of the shaft that goes into them. Each one has three leads, so by pulling gently on the potentiometer while melting the solder on the leads, it can be removed. Then use the solder wick to remove the solder from the three holes, then repeat this for the second potentiometer on the joystick. That was the easy part. There are eight leads left. This is where you need a really small pair of cutters. We are going to cut as many of the remaining leads as we can. The four leads holding the frame of the joystick are pretty easy to get to to cut. The four on the switch are harder to access, but if I can cut two of them, I can just melt the solder on the last two and gently pull it from the PC board. Of course that still leaves six pins soldered in the PC board. If they don't stick out enough to get the cutters or a pair of tweezers on them, might need a very small pin to stick into the hole to push the lead out while melting the solder that's holding the lead. It can be a little tricky, just need three hands. Then clean the solder out of the holes with the solder wick. I do like to clean the flux off the board, especially the flux that comes from the solder wick. This appears to be an exact fit. 
I will solder a couple of the frame pins first while pushing the joystick against the PC board. Then make sure all sides of the joystick are flush with the PC board. Then just solder the rest of the pins. Now I'll put the motor wires back in place for the controller I did the hard way. No need to remove them if going to vacuum desolder the joystick. The knobs go back on. And now the front cover with the small FPC cable. The cable has to be fed through a slot in the frame. It can be a little aggravating as it has quite a bit of bend to it. But once it is through the slot, can use the tab on it to push it into the connector. Make sure the PC board is in its clips. And then the battery holder goes on. Then the battery plugs in. Now the back has to go on. This flex cable is really short, so that makes it a little tricky to push into the connector. Then the back snaps on. Make sure everything moves as it should. Then replace the screws and we're done. Now from a non-professional gamer's point of view, can't tell the difference between these replacements and the original joystick modules. So I think these are a winner. Now if you don't have access to a desoldering gun and the mechanical part of the joystick is okay, I would do this repair a little different. If you are repairing a version of the controller with the green potentiometers, I would order the green replacement potentiometers and just replace them. If you need to replace the orange potentiometers, I would order the orange kit and remove the potentiometers from the new joysticks and change out just the potentiometers. Definitely will make this repair much easier. Let's tear apart one of these old defective joysticks and see what we have. This is the joystick from the white controller. The logo appears to be that of Favor Union Electronics and they do make a joystick that looks just like this one. One side of the shaft is just a slot that allows it to push down on the switch. That's pretty neat. The potentiometers just have ears that clip into the metal joystick frame. And the wiper assembly just clips into the potentiometer element. Four metal tabs, bent over, hold the mechanical parts of the joystick together. The plastic bottom piece holds a plastic plate and the spring that applies pressure to the entire joystick. Quite a few little pieces. It's hard to see here, but some of the resistive material is missing from the potentiometer element. Did it last the 2 million operations it's rated for? I kind of doubt it, but they do take quite a bit of abuse. Here is the joystick from the black controller. It's made by Alps. Kind of the same arrangement of parts as in the Favor Union one, except for the parts for the pressure spring. Really a much smaller spring and yet the joysticks feel about the same. You can see here why the potentiometers are not interchangeable. There is quite a bit of difference in the tabs that hold them to the joystick frame. And while it's quite hard to see, the opening for the shaft is quite a bit smaller on the Alps potentiometer. Well, that kind of wraps this up. Thank you for watching.